Now that I have a full year of uploading three times a week here on YouTube, these are some of the things I wish I knew when I was first doing YouTube full time. It would have helped me grow twice as fast. If you are looking to take YouTube seriously, by the end of the video, you should have a better understanding of the things you should look out for, things that YouTubers typically don't talk about on camera. For more art and entrepreneurship type videos, make sure to like the video, jingle all my bells and buttons for new videos every Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I'm Jen, the ex-Disney artist turned independent creator. I make videos on social media on how to grow your side hustle to help you monetize your creative passions. I also document my own journey in running my online art business to share with you what works and what doesn't work. Let's get started. Number one is camera equipment matters. One of the main things most YouTubers will tell you when you're first getting started is that your camera equipment doesn't matter. And I agree with this sentiment for the most part. If your problem right now is you haven't started YouTube, yes, camera equipment doesn't really matter. You should just start uploading videos and creating content. I didn't start this channel with the best camera equipment either. I started with what I had and what I could afford, but I did make it a priority to invest in much better camera equipment as soon as I could. The reason being, I took being a full-time YouTuber extremely seriously. I wanted to be considered in a certain caliber of YouTuber. When you look at all the most popular YouTubers on this platform, they all look and sound a certain way. Whether you realize it or not, that kind of lends a certain credibility to these YouTubers subconsciously. If I wanted to be taken seriously, I needed to look and sound a certain way as well. And if you wait to invest in better camera equipment, it can hold you back in your growth. For example, I saw the difference in my own channel when I invested in better equipment. When I got a better camera and better sound equipment, I immediately saw an increase in views on my channel. Initially, I was really skeptical of this because I'm someone who prefers quality content over flashy visuals or nice camera quality, for example. But every time I upgraded my filming equipment, it made a huge difference. Whether I upgraded my camera or got better lenses, it didn't matter. I feel like a lot of YouTubers delay doing this because of how expensive camera equipment can be. But I'm telling you, it is worth the investment every single time. Because I've seen pretty noticeable results month after month every single time I do this, I'm making it a goal to invest in better equipment every once in a while. If you are curious about the camera equipment that I'm currently using, I'll have them all listed down below. And if you click the link, it'll help the channel out. Number two is burnout, or what I would like to call mindset growing pains. If you've been on YouTube for even a second, you've most likely heard of burnout. I personally pride myself as a hard worker, which is why I never really thought it would happen to me. But after a year of YouTube, I realize it's inevitable and a bit of a rite of passage. I personally call it mindset growing pains, and a lot of these concepts come from Robert Kiyosaki's book, The Four Quadrants. When you are first doing YouTube full time, you most likely will be transitioning from being an employee and working for someone else to being self-employed or a business. That means your mindset, or in better terms, your personality has to change a little bit. When you are an employee, you don't have all that much day-to-day -day stress. All you really need to worry about is to clock in and clock out at work, and you will always, practically always, get guaranteed a paycheck. When you are suddenly self-employed, that completely changes. Your deadlines suddenly stress you out a whole lot more because that means whether or not you make your deadlines kind of means whether or not you get paid at the end of the week. Or if your YouTube business or your videos succeed or fail, that's completely on you. There's no one else to blame. No coworker, no boss, no nothing. Another really big difference is once you become a YouTuber, you have to wear multiple hats. A lot of people seem to think that being a YouTuber is filming all day or editing all day. That's actually about 30% of the job. 70% of it is a whole lot of other things that no one ever shows you. Things like uploading, SEO, thumbnail creation, marketing, self-promoting yourself on every single platform until people hate you. The researching can take days on top of the writing and the designing and the branding and everything. All those little things eat up at your time and those are what I would like to call 70% of the job. That's kind of what most of the job is and it's not 
not the fun, sexy parts of being a YouTuber. So long story short, the stress is always going to be there. As an employee, you trade the stress for stability or security, or an illusion of stability and security. Once you become a full-time YouTuber or a self-employed person, you kind of become a little bit of a perfectionist, a control freak, and your mindset and your personality has to get comfortable with the instability. You have to get used to the stress. How you deal with the stress can make or break whether or not you become a successful YouTuber. So because of all this added responsibility, because of all the stress and the emotional stress of being a YouTuber, you are on camera, which means the entire world is going to judge you and they will. The internet can be really harsh. Burnout is going to happen, no matter how superhuman you think you are. The thing is, I've learned that burnout is avoidable. The key to avoiding burnout is to transition from being self-employed to to a business. Number three, becoming a YouTube business. Many, if not 80 to 90% of YouTubers are stuck in the self-employed category, sometimes for years, if not forever. But in my opinion, it's incredibly important that if you want to grow as a YouTuber and you want to grow sustainably without burnout, without practically killing yourself over the amount of stress and work all of this is, is to become a business, a YouTube business. That means creating a system and how hiring people to help you. I'm constantly surprised by how so many people don't know that a lot of YouTubers are actually teams of people. The YouTuber is the influencer or the front-facing camera person, but they have an entire team behind the scenes helping them edit videos, marketing, branding, creating merch, everything that you see. But at the end of the day, what it seems like to you, the viewer or the audience, it seems like it's just one person being very relatable talking to camera to you. That's how a lot of these really large YouTubers are able to do so much, to have a merch store, to have multiple channels, and to be able to get brand deals, to post on Instagram, TikTok, every platform imaginable. So for me, as I grow and as my income grows, I will continue to develop my system so that I can do more, not completely by myself. It's extremely important for me to hire the right people to help me get the job done and to be able to grow and do more. One of my goals is to one day be able to step back, to step out of the business so that the business can run without me and I can still be making money no problem. Number four is to invest in yourself. One of the most important things that you're going to have to do in your first year of YouTube is to learn. This is going to test how humble you can be because I definitely felt that I knew how to do things and I knew how to teach myself how to do things. But the problem is you don't truly know how hard it is to do something yourself or how long it actually takes to learn how to do something yourself. There are a lot of things I thought I knew how to do well or I thought I know how to teach myself how to do anything but it took a lot longer for me to figure out how to learn how to do on completely on my own. The problem with this is that you can practically teach yourself how to do anything for free online on YouTube. If you've ever tried doing that you'll start to realize how slow the process actually is compared to if you took a class, for example. Free information is usually vague on purpose and it doesn't have the step-by-step -step process to tell you the next step in your journey. That is exactly why. Tell me if you've done this before. It's very easy to go down a YouTube rabbit hole watching videos for hours, days, weeks, trying to learn something and by the end of the week, you still feel a little bit lost and confused. The best example of this is, let's say you want to lose weight. There are so many great resources here on YouTube to teach you how to do it yourself. So you might be able to lose 15 pounds in let's say a year. But if you actually paid a personal trainer to help you lose weight, you might lose 15 pounds in two to three weeks. And it's because the personal trainer is an expert who has worked out all the mistakes for you. They know 
know exactly the step-by-step -step process to help you get results in the shortest amount of time possible. You don't have to learn by trial and error and what works or doesn't work for you. That's why if you want to grow and you want to grow fast, it's incredibly important for you to invest in things like courses and coaches. Think of all the successful people that you know, the most successful athlete, business people, celebrity actors, whoever, they all have coaches and they all take courses to improve their craft because they are professional. You are no different if you want to be excellent at being a filmmaker, YouTuber personality. I've personally taken a few courses myself and they've helped me immensely. They've helped me grow and they've helped me increase my income almost immediately. That is why it's extremely important for me to take a few courses every single year so that I continue growing and not stagnate. This is part of becoming an investor in yourself. You have to learn to manage the risk of spending money, sometimes a lot of money on your own education. And it's really important that you invest in the right teachers and people who you trust because in the land of the internet, there are a lot of people who might be selling courses that might not necessarily get you the results you want, especially when you are a new YouTuber and you might not necessarily have a whole lot of money to spend right away, it's important to do your research. But if you do dare to take that risk, you will find that the money will come back 10 times the amount that you paid. If you'd like to learn more about how to use social media to grow your online business, check out my free guide, Eight Steps to Launch Your Online Store. Head over to honeyandapson.com to check out my merch. I'm currently wearing the Cat Demon Bomber Jacket today. Every purchase helps support this channel and help me grow. Check out these other videos next if you'd like to learn more about how to use YouTube, Instagram to grow your online business. If if you like the video, like the video, jingle all my bells and buttons for more art and entrepreneurship type videos, and don't forget to dare to dream.